welcome to this edition of Spiritual Thinking. Today I want to speak with you about the absolute importance of being unwavering or wishy-washy in your decisions. How it is very important to be steadfast and resolute and to stand firm. So we want to focus on how it is that we can become resolute to stand firm in those decisions, especially of a spiritual nature that are important to all you true believers. Let's open this healing service for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, indeed, it is critical to one's spiritual evolution, as well as one's success and prosperity in the material world, that one stand firm. Let's have a few readings from this upon. Stand for something. Stand for something. Take a stand for what's real and true. Have the backbone and true grit to really stick to it, although the world may tempt and entice into the ways of its avarice and perverse vice. Don't even think about letting go of your point of view. Don't even go there. For nothing really matters if it's not worth fighting for. To be vigorously defended that which is right you worship and adore. Stand for something that's important to you. It never really pays to compromise your values. Exercise your sacred free will to do what's right. Many great persons have perished, refusing to be swayed, for the one who wavers does himself nor herself any favors. It's far better to dwell and stand on the absolute. Don't water it down. Be resolute. Worship the God within you, because you can't serve two masters, God or devil. Stand firm with whom you are, with who you are. Yield not to vicious manipulation, for that leads to loss of dignity and frustration. Say, no, you are not coming into my head. No, you are not taking me over. I won't let you violate my free will. Regardless of what you say or do, I'll keep standing on my convictions. Stand for something that's real and true. Stand firm. Truly enough, it is very important to, in this world today, with its many arrays of all sorts of points of view, to, like the wind, you can, like a leaf upon the wind, blow upon here, fly upon there, but you must have a strong point of view. Now here we go from a few readings from the scriptures. Psalms. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. So it is that once you, you want to stand firm so that you not, do not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash mine hands in innocency. And so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men. 
and whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. So it is that you want your foot, that is your thought, to stand in an even place that is firmly. Now we have here from Exodus. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So it is that like Moses, who at first was like wobbly, he was wavering. When the Lord first asked and the Lord first asked him and told him what it is that the work that he would have to do regarding the people being free, he he was of a doubtful mind. He was, in other words, he was wishy-washy. But you see, that when the Lord calls you to do something and you are a true believer, you want to be a true believer and follow in the ways of truth and righteousness and light and not darkness, then you want to stand firm. And as Moses decided to, within himself, to have an even thought, then he was able to go forth doing the Lord's will and speak to Pharaoh to tell them to let the people go. Now we have from Exodus again. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. So, standing firm has to do with holding your peace, holding your ground. And when you stand firm within the spirit upon the rock of the Most High, you will be able to be able to go forward and deal with what it is you have to deal with. Deuteronomy. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto today. So it is that truly you who are true believers, because there is so much in the way of the world, of whatever way that may express itself, that it at times becomes difficult to be able to stand firm. There are so many distractions of one kind or another, so many suggestions of one kind or another. And it really takes an effort of will, a great effort of will to be able to stand firm. But you have the power within. The Most High has given you the power to be able to stand firm. Now we continue on. Again from Deuteronomy, take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. So it is, as I mentioned before earlier, you cannot serve God in mammon or God in the devil or God in error or whatever way that you perceive that which is in direct opposition to truth and right and light. So it is that you must choose, and you must choose to stand firm and not serve other gods, but only the one true God. Now we have here from Deuteronomy again. And shall say unto them, Hear as you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight. 
for you against the enemies to save you. So you have help if you at times may sense to wobble and tremble and uh, waver. You, if you will go within to that place that is everlasting strength and peace and love and all good, and you go within that place, whether in meditation or prayer, you will find the strength within to be able to stand firm and trust in the Most High. Now again from Deuteronomy, and the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, what man is there fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. So let not your heart be faint-hearted and fearful once you've made the decision to walk in the path of righteousness and light and truth because others are watching you. And as Jesus said, let you, let you must be a light into this world. Why must you be a light into this world? Because this world is full of so much darkness and ignorance and false beliefs and errors of one kind or another. And most people are taken by deception and trickery of one kind or another. And they believe it false, the truth, it seems to them a lie, and the lie to them has become the truth. So you who have come to know the truth and to dwell in the truth, then you indeed must stand in the truth and stand firm in that, that you may not only deliver your own soul and grow in your spiritual evolution, but also that others may be able to do so too. First Chronicles, and to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord and likewise at evening. So you also you should steadily stand and praise God and give thanks to the Most High for all of the blessings and benefits that you receive from day to day. Now we have here from Second Chronicles, if when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before the house of God and in thy presence and cry unto thee in our affliction, then wilt thou hear and help. So when trials and tribulations of one kind or another beset you, that is the time to stand firm in the truth. Stand firm in, upon the rock of the Most High. Now, friends, let's have a song. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Bravely stand your ground. Don't let them make you back down. Mm. Don't be scared to stand. Be not afraid to stand. Have no fear to stand. On the rock of principle. On the rock of principle. Do you have a weak back or weak knees? Just letting others do as they please. It's so easy to bend over like a rover. But to be strong you must fight. It's the sick of what's for right. And if the world turns its back on you, bravely stand your ground. Don't let them push you around. 
Don't be afraid to stand Be not afraid to stand Have no fear to stand On the rock of principle On the rock of principle Don't let them make you cower No, give up your power Stand up as a person of your own free will You are not a doormat for others and their thrills Refuse to compromise your values No silver, no silver or gold At the end of the day, you must be true to your heart and soul. Children, just say, I won't let you take me down, nor let you push me around. The road back, I can't go for that. I'm standing for something real on solid ground. Oh, bravely stand your ground. Don't let them make you back down, children. Don't be afraid to stand. Be not afraid to stand. Have no fear to stand firm. On the rock of principle. On the rock of principle. Yes, indeed, you want to stand firm on the rock of principle. Indeed, because in that way, you will be able to truly be one who walks in the light. Now, how is it that if you're not accustomed to standing firm or it seems difficult at times for you to stand firm, especially I'm speaking of spirituality? Well... Worship the God within yourself. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. So as you worship the God within you, then that soul, almighty, omnipotent one, will enable you by the infinite strength within to begin to stand firm. Also, stand up as a person. You, as a child of God, have free will, which was, is your sacred right. And as this is your sacred right, you must exercise that free will. Especially, I'm speaking in the ways of spirituality, not just in the ways of trying to achieve this in the world or material things which fade and pass away. Even that wealth which you amass, somebody will get it when you're gone. So only things that really matter are that which is of spiritual things. Also, stand in your truth. Stand in the truth. For the truth alone is that which is real, and the truth alone which is that which is everlasting. Stand firm with who you are and others. Don't let them violate you. Don't let the world violate your free will, for you are the one who has the power, except if you give it up. If you give it up, then, of course, you can become a doormat for others to walk upon and tread upon and use and abuse and all of those unkind things that the world do from everyone day to day. But as you stand firm with who you are and also don't let the negative suggestions come into your head and control you because 
If you don't control your mind, you will be controlled by your mind. And that is not as it was meant to be. Let's have a few more readings from the scriptures on this matter. Okay, this is from Romans. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into his death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even as we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So that as, as you stern, stand firm, you are true believers, and you have been saved and are in the newness of life, then you should stand firm in the newness of this new life. Whereas the old person, the old man or woman of the world has been put aside, because you have turned away from the darkness and are endeavoring to stand firm in the path of light. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So the old person that you were before you came into the salvation of Christ is can have no more dominion over you if you stand firm resolute and steadfast in the truth in the Christ now know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants you are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So it is that you cannot serve two masters. You cannot be wishy-washy. You cannot waver if you truly want to be on the path of righteousness and be a true believer. But stand firm in the truth. Now we have here from 1 John. Love ye not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard that an antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. So it is that to stand firm in the truth and stand firm in the path of righteousness is to love not the things of this world. For the things of this world shall pass away. And I'm sure that if you are a true believer and walking in the path of, of righteousness and truth, that you truly want to have no part of that which is of the world, because you will become a new creature. 
a new being, a new man, a new woman, in the truth, in the light of Christ. And so therefore you want to stand firm in this. Now at times it's difficult, even for those who've long time been saved, because there's still that element of sin that you have to deal with. But by the grace of God and the power within, you can be victorious, for we are more than conquerors with the Most High with us. Now from 2 Chronicles. Again, if when evil come upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before the house of God and in thy presence and cry unto thee in our affliction, then will he hear and help. So we always have the help of the Most High, a very present help, a very present help, not only in time of trouble, but a very present help in time of confusion, a very present help in time of temptation, a very present help in time of those who would have us go in the ways of the world. And in standing firm upon the rock of truth, which is the principle, then you truly will grow and evolve spiritually and you will be able to stand firm as a child of light. Whoa, bravely stand your ground, don't let them make you back down. Don't be afraid to stand, have no fear to stand, be not afraid to stand, on the rock of principle, on the rock of truth. So we want to focus on how it is that we can become resolute to stand firm in those decisions, especially of a spiritual nature, that are important to all you true believers. Let's open this healing service for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, indeed, it is critical to one's spiritual evolution, as well as one's success and prosperity in the material world, that one stand firm. Let's have a few readings from this upon. Stand for something. Stand for something. Take a stand for what's real and true. Have the backbone and true grit to really stick to it, although the world may tempt and entice into the ways of its avarice and perverse vice. Don't even think about letting go of your point of view. Don't even go there. For nothing really matters if it's not worth fighting for. To be vigorously defended that which is right you worship and adore. Stand for something that's important to you 
It never really pays to compromise your values. Exercise your sacred free will to do what's right. Many great persons have perished, refusing to be swayed. For the one who wavers does himself nor herself any favors. It's far better to dwell and stand on the absolute. Don't water it down. Be resolute. Worship the God within you. Because you can't serve two masters, God or the devil. Stand firm with whom you are, with who you are. Yield not to vicious manipulation, for that leads to loss of dignity and frustration. Say, no, you are not coming into my head. No, you are not taking me over. I won't let you violate my free will. Regardless of what you say or do, I'll keep standing on my convictions. Stand for something that's real and true. Stand firm. Truly enough, it is very important to, in this world today with its many arrays of all sorts of points of view to, like the wind, you can, like a leaf upon the wind, blow. edition of spiritual thinking. Today I want to speak with you about the absolute importance of being unwavering or wishy-washy in your decisions. How it is very important to be steadfast and resolute and to stand upon here, fly upon there, but you must have a strong point of view. Now here we go from a few readings from the scriptures. Psalms. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. So it is that once you, you want to stand firm so that you not, do not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash mine hands in innocency, and so will I compass thine altar, O Lord that I may publish with 